in First Thessalonians 4.16, it says, The dead in Christ will rise first. We just talked about this. Mm-hmm. If we believe that those who have died are in heaven right now and not in soul sleep, what does that mean? Right. <clears throat> That's explained in the previous verses. And so when, you, when you're in verse 13... Uh, Paul says, I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, uh, concerning those who have fallen asleep. Actually, I, I, have, to, I have to kind of make fun here. See, the, uh, in that passage it says, I don't want you to be ignorant, comma, brethren. Um, there, there is no punctuation in Greek. Mm-hmm. And so that could be, it could be stating, I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, just goofing around there. I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren. Concerning those who have fallen asleep, and that's talking about people who've died, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. And uh, then he talks about the resurrection and the rapture of the church. And so um, you have an order there. And, And so when Jesus is coming back to the earth, by the way, Jesus is called God in this passage, because Jesus is the one who's coming. Uh, when Jesus comes from heaven to perform the resurrection and to take those who are alive with him to be with him and, you know, catch them up to be with him in the air. And that's the rapture of the church. When Jesus is doing that, it says in the passage that he brings with him those who sleep in Jesus. Well, if he's bringing them with him, where's he coming from? This is a question I always ask my people. So where, where's the Lord coming from when he's coming to the earth to gather all the people back to take them to heaven? And where he's coming from is heaven. And so if he's bringing these, the, these who have uh, fallen asleep in Christ with him, he would have to be bringing them with him from heaven, which precludes them being laying there in the ground waiting for him. They have to be with him in heaven. And so what you have here is... Jesus coming to the earth not to retrieve the, those who have died in Christ. He's coming to the earth with those who have died in Christ to get their bodies. And so this is the order of the resurrection. All those who've died in Christ, the Bible's really clear on this. Uh, you, uh, if you depart from this body, Paul said in, uh, uh, oh gosh, I always mess this up. It's Galatians or Philippians. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's Philippians. He says, it's, it's better for me to depart and be with Christ than to be here on the earth. And so Paul expected that when he died, he was going to go be with Christ. He taught that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, where he said, when you're absent from your body, you're present with the Lord. When you're present in your body, you're absent from the Lord. And so absent from the body, present with the Lord. And so when I die, that's, that's what death is. I leave my body. And so death is not your soul goes to sleep inside your body and gets buried. Death is your spirit leaves your body, um, biblically speaking. And the only thing that is actually asleep in that sense is the body itself. And so there's a reason that Christians called it, said, said it that way. One of them is because that's what Jesus said in uh, John chapter 11, Lazarus sleeps and so I'm going to wake him. And then they said, well, if he's sleeping, that's good because he's been sick. He'll get better. And Jesus goes, no, he's dead. You know, and so he makes it clear what he's talking about. Um, the reason that, that Christians adopt that is because when we bury somebody, we know that body's not staying that way. That body is going to rise. And so it's, it's not the person themselves that's asleep. It's the body that's asleep. The person himself has gone to be with the Lord. And this passage says he brings them with him. So Jesus is coming back to uh, uh, perform the resurrection. He gathers up all those who've died in Christ and says, let's go. We're going to go get your bodies. Comes down. They rise first. They're, they re-inhabit their bodies. And their bodies are changed. And they rise first. And then all the rest of us are taken in the rapture. So Everybody who's a Christian, everybody down through the ages who's a Christian takes part in the rapture, which is kind of a cool thing. Because a lot of people think, oh, well, if I die, I miss the rapture. No, you're going to be first. Okay, so we can't know all this, but just, just for <clears throat> argument's sake, 
Do you think that this is, when it says in the twinkling of an eye, you know, it kind of, it's the shortest amount of time and you can get into all the science about that. But do you think that it's just a, it's just the last trumpet, bam, and this all happens at once? Or do you think that believers are going to be able to see like these dead bodies rising? And is it going to be like their perfected body coming out that's met with their spirit? And then we watch this and then follow them up? Or do you think it's just all going to happen at once? Well, I, I, I think that, uh, I mean, the, the order that you have there, it's a, it specifically says, uh, for this we say to you, verse 15, by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. And th- so there's an order to the resurrection. Right. So, so yeah, they get raised time first. in there somewhere. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a there's a moment of time there. So we're we're going to be able to see this. Uh, well, I, I guess if you're hanging out by a graveyard. Yeah, I'm just thinking like all the saints from the history of the world are met with the Lord in the air. Like there's even in the tri cities, there's going to be some saints like floating up somewhere. Yeah, and then because this is connected to the rapture, where believers are uh, followed after that, right? Because we're. Uh, mm-hmm. We're still in our bodies, so we just go with him. Do you think that the world will be able to see this event, or it's going to be in the spiritual realm where they, where they have no idea what's going on? I have no idea. Yeah. You know, it's like I do, you know, it's it, it when Jesus describes it in, in the Gospel of Matthew and also in the Gospel of, of Luke, it says, what he says is two people are working in the field, one's taken, the other's left. Right. And so it's like, boom, he's gone. You know, and so I don't know if, if that's Boomy's gone, he disappears, or Boomy's gone. You know, you, you watch him taken him off, you know, up into the air. Yeah. You know, which I, would be a trip. Yeah, one's taken. Either it's, one's it's a trip. Says. Yeah, either one's a trip. And and uh, <laughs> two people in one bed in uh, in Luke chapter seventeen, and uh, uh, two women grinding at a mill, and one's taken, the others left. That's the description that you have. And so, you know, it's like I, I don't know beyond that, you know. I kind of think your tennis shoes are going to be left. and There'll be a little puff of smoke going up. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just messing around. It's wild to think about, though. All the naysayers, all the Bill Mars, all the people that, oh, no religion, no God, all the atheists, all of a sudden there's going to be this event that they cannot explain. And it's just going to be like, even even if we don't see all that, okay, mm-hmm. even if the dude just disappears or whatever, or a lot of people think the nukes are going to be launched, and so the dead in Christ are mixed with people they can't find. Whatever happens, it's going to be something where they can't just, di- you know, disavow it. It's going to be like, there's something going on here. Yeah. Uh, you know, what, what Jesus said is that this event's going to take place, and then sudden destruction is going to come on the rest of the planet. And so... Uh, I imagine that there's going to be a number of people who who sit there and you know watch people at least disappear, um, or you know maybe even see them taken up into the air and then the nukes fall. That's the order. Yeah. So resurrection and then sudden destruction, and it's out of that sudden destruction that the Antichrist rises. Uh, uh, there's a reference in in uh, uh, Revelation chapter 13 where it talks about the Antichrist blaspheming those in heaven. And it's really interesting because what's the point of that? Um, what, why, would, why would you... Blasphemy means uh, you're trashing somebody. You're, you're saying, saying things that are false about them, about who they are, whatever, uh, about those in heaven. Why would you say that? You know, it's like there's, there's not a lot of people uh, on the planet right now that are sitting there talking about, you know, people who have died and gone to heaven and, and spend one second on the subject. And so why would the subject come up in the first place? And why would you have to be talking about them? And why would you have to be telling lies about them? And so uh, it looks like it's an explanatory type of situation. He has to explain the disappearance of, of all of these people. And so he's defaming them. Yeah. And the, the standard, they're, they're already doing this. Uh, when, you're, when you're talking about New Agers, uh, they... Uh, are are talking about a next step <clears throat> in human evolution, and and that there are people that um, the planet is going to vomit out, or uh, when you're talking about guys who believe in in aliens uh, guiding human evolution and that kind of stuff, there are people on this planet that the aliens have to get rid of before they can take the next step, and so in New Age writings. 
they're talking about Gaia getting rid of Christians and Jews, uh, specifically, getting rid of these people so that everybody else can move on uh, because we're the ones who believe in one God and, and so on, even, even Muslims, uh, too. And uh, that's where New Agers are going. The alien guys are saying that uh, the aliens are going to come and they're going to transport all the Christians out of here so we can basically go to re-education camps. They really say this. So we can be taken to re-education camps, and they're going to take care of us and try to help us to understand how the, how the universe really goes and then maybe let us come back and, uh, and that kind of thing. But they're already talking about the removal of Christians, and all of that's blasphemous. Because what the Bible says is that the reason that we're going is because we're followers of Christ and Jesus loves us and he wants to take us home to be with him. That's the, that's the real answer to that. So, yeah, they're already talking about it. And it looks like the Antichrist has to, at the, at the very least, when you see him in, in uh, Revelation 13, he has to address those who, who are dwelling in heaven at that point. And uh, it, it looks like that may be why. Imagine it's going to be, a, you know, with the false prophet, with this PR guy. Yeah. It's going to be like ultimate propaganda mode. And that has to be involved with, you know, guys going, well, what's going on here? It's going to be a combination of just the most uh, ungodly, satanic attack that we've ever seen. I don't think this is going to be difficult for him. You know, it's like we, we just went through COVID and now we're going through, you know, all yeah. the political upheaval in the United States. And there's States. no restrainer. And, yeah, and... Yeah, and, and we've got the, the Holy Spirit as a restrainer at this point, restraining evil and stuff. I, and, and you've got people who are so snowed by uh, uh, stuff that is, that is obvious pro- propaganda, uh, you know, where a politician can say, you know, white is black and black is white, or blue is green and green is blue. And people go, yeah, you know, or there, you know, there's no gender, or that, that kind of stuff. People go along with this nonsense. The, this is not going to be a hard thing. Um, I'm 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 pretty dejected about uh, the capacity of of um, humans to understand the truth. Uh, the the last couple of years has has been an eye opener. Yeah. Uh, in in this kind of area, you know. That's when, for sure. <clears throat> when Jesus compared us to sheep. It's absolutely true. <laughs> did, you, did you see the the uh, the uh, uh, I I don't know if it was a TikTok video, but there's a video going around of these sheep in China that are just going around in a circle. Uh. They, they've been doing it for weeks. They got them in a pen. They're just running in a circle, and they they don't know why they're running in a circle. They're just running in a circle. Well, the reason why they're running in a circle is because they're sheep. And the one that they follow is going around in a circle. That's right. why. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know. All you have to do is figure out who the who the lead sheep was, and you know, make a shish kebab out of him, and they would stop. You know. So anyway, sheep. When you said that, I was thinking of the there's a there's a meme or a video where they pull this sheep that's in a ditch. Oh yeah. Get him out of the ditch. He, <laughs> that's he, a good one. He jumps off. He takes like two bounds. Wham! Right back in the ditch. And you're like, that's my life. That's me. Jesus got to come save me as Run soon as he does. Run perpendicular. Yeah. <laughs>